This is the future. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Warframe guide. In today's video I will be listing all the primary weapons that I think are on top of the food chain right now. These are the primary weapons that help me progress through the normal and star chart missions and uh, as well as the open world missions in Warframe. In addition, some of the weapons included here mixes fun mechanics and power and most of them are insane when it comes to kill speed. So let's cut into any long introduction and begin the video. Take note that this is in no particular order and uh, all the weapons here are useful in real missions, beginning with the recently added Exceltra Prime. Despite of the poor ammunition economy, many players enjoy Exceltra Prime because it can both shred and kill multiple enemies fast. Players just use the Carrier Prime right now to convert ammunition to Exceltra Prime's ammo and lessen the burden fast ammunition depletion, especially if you have high fire rate in the game. Exceltra Prime can be acquired from the new Prime Relics right now, or you can just go to Warframe.Market and purchase the set from other players with Platinum. By the way, there are lots of Prime weapons included in here, so if you want to check out their course responding relics, then just head over to your relic tab and search for the weapon you're looking. That's the easiest way to get all the information generally on the prime parts you are looking for. Moving on, we got Incarnon Boar Prime. Admittedly, the vanilla variant is not that good, while the prime variant of this automatic shotgun is serviceable. The Incarnon form, however, is the best upgrade as not only does it adds perk to increases the overall performance of the shotgun, but it has now an alternative fire wherein you can turn it into a beam weapon that shoots lasers and chain to multiple targets within reach. The best part is that it got a very high Riven disposition which makes it a candidate for red crit builds. Hell, the normal fire of the gun shreds with the Incarnon variant, and you can try this out by farming it through relics or purchasing it from other players. While the Incarnon adapter of the gun can be purchased from Cavalero right now for 120 platinum. Next, we got one of my favorite infested weapons in the game called the Bubunico. This is an infested shotgun arm cannon that launches a barrage of toxin blasts from its primary fire, while its alternate fire shoots three explosive viral shots in a burst. The arm cannon does not have ammo reserves and instead regenerates ammo, which makes it a perfect all-rounder gun in Warframe. The Bubonico's blueprint can be researched from the Bio Lab in the Dojo. Also, we got Cedo on the list. This is Lavos's signature shotgun, with a primary fire shooting fully automatic buckshot rounds with high critical chance and deals increased damage with each individual status effect affecting the target. And an alternate fire that launches an exploding ricocheting glaive with extreme status chance to amplify the primary fire's output. This is one of the best gun in the game that can kill without mod because of its built-in condition overload feature. You proc multiple status with its secondary fire, then kill them with the primary fire. It can also be used as a great status primer in Warframe, and there are combos such as Mesa's Ballistic Bullseye that turns this shotgun into a red crit nuking monster. Cedo's blueprint and components are available from Father with Entrati standing. The main blueprint requires players to be at rank 4, while components require rank 5. Each item costs 5,000 standing, totaling to 20,000. The blueprint and all components can be traded. Next, we have the Phalarx, which is one of the decent weapon used for Archon hunts. This Incarnate shotgun is not known for its Incarnate form, but for its normal fire that deals decent damage to bosses such as the Archons in the game. It's also one of those weapons in the game that is great with a non-crit build because of its devouring attrition perk on Evolution 5 that grants insane damage to gun on non-critical hits. Philarx's main blueprint is purchased from Cavalero of the Holdfast at rank 3 for 8,000 standing. The blueprint can be traded. The next weapon is probably the oldest and one of the best progression weapon in the game. This is Ignis Wraith's blueprint drops from abandoned derelict caches and grinder controlled veil proxima missions. Alternatively, it can be sold by the void in the concourse section, or you can get it through research for clans ranked 10 and above in the chem lab. So what makes the gun special? In terms of progression, wherein you just need a gun that can kill multiple enemies fast, then this flamethrower is the gun for you. And the best part is it's also steel path viable, but not to the point that it can also shred enemies fast. It's serviceable in steel path levels, and it's one of those weapons that you can get just by asking on the chat that you want one. Next, we have the Incarnate Miter. This gun is only used for popping nullifier bubbles in the past with its neutralizing justice augment, but now Miter is devastating with its Incarnate form as it lets you fire homing and bouncing heat damage explosives that melts multiple targets easily. Miter's main blueprint and components can be obtained from the dual boss team Lech Krill and Captain Vor on Exta series, while the Incarnate Adapter can be farmed in Steel Path Duviri's circuit in a weekly rotational basis. The next weapon that you 
should try in Warframe is not a ruck. This is probably the best bow that I've used with a fun mechanic in Warframe. It has infinite ammo and releasing the shot just before a full charge will perform a perfect shot that is more effective. Not a ruck is given upon completion of the new war, complete with a free weapon slot and a pre-installed Orokin catalyst. Additional copies of Not a ruck can be bought from Cephalon Samaras for 100,000 standings. Next we have Phantasma Prime. This is the prime variant of Revenant's signature shotgun that fires deadly focused beams of radiation that also deals impact damage. Its alternate fire manually charges and launches a large plasma bomb that explodes into five additional homing projectiles, dealing more damage the longer the alt fire is charged. While the alternate fire is good, its main power is from the primary fire that melts enemies fast. It's also good as a primer gun and works perfect in a grouping setup when you have abilities like ensnare. The gun has low range that you would need to group enemies in one spot so you can hit all of them in one go. The Phantasma's blueprint can be purchased from the market and it costs about 25k credits. Also, let's talk about Fenmore, which is one of the best weapon in the game right now for general gameplay in Warframe. This is one of the original Incarnan ceremonial weapon, starting out as a semi-automatic rifle and can be transformed it into a fully automatic rapid fire heavy weapon with bonus radiation damage after stacking Incarnan charges with headshots. It also has the devouring attrition perk that turns this gun into a monster if you don't mod it for critical chance. Fenmore's main blueprint is purchased from Cavalero of the Holdfast at rank 2 for 6,000 standings. I also have Proboscis Cernos on this list because of its fun mechanic. This is an enhanced Mutilus Cernos that launches appendages that pulls enemies in towards its zone of impact before releasing a large viral explosion. Now, I'll be honest and say that this weapon is not made for Steel Path and Beyond, especially against high armored units, but the grouping and nuking mechanic of the Proboscis Cernos makes it worth playing. When you have a Warframe like Hildren that can strip both armor and shield, the Proboscis Cernos becomes a very potent weapon and can kill high level enemies in a satisfying manner. If you want to try this out, then you can purchase its blueprint in the market for 30k credits. And then we also have the best sniper for Eidolon hunting, the Rubico Prime. High critical chance with high crit damage and total damage, which are the perfect stats for taking out those big trees in the plains of Eidolon. If it's your first time Eidolon hunting, then you might want to take Rubico Prime if you don't have a void raid to obliterate those bosses in the plains easily. This Prime Sniper can be acquired through trading with other players or farming its component and blueprint on its corresponding relics. There's also those weapons that are not considered meta because they can do level cap, but they are popular because they pair with specific setup and enough to kill enemies in steel path levels. Such weapons includes the Shadow. This is a sentient assault rifle arm cannon that fires heat beams that create electricity explosions on impact. When expending the battery, it releases a large pulse, staggering enemies with an impact proc and removing sentient damage resistances. The arm cannon does not have ammo reserves and instead regenerates ammo. This is perfect with Wisp Prime and it gets the job done in steel path levels and you will mostly see this setup being used in camping during steel path void fisher missions. The weapon blueprint is given to the player at the end of the era quest. Additional blueprints can be bought from Cephalon Simaris for 100,000. While the Shidu's components are rare drops from Symbolus found in sentient anomalies that appear in the Veil Proxima during Empyrean missions. The ship occupies one random node for 30 minutes indicated by a red flashing sentient symbol then rotates to a different node. Symbolists were also found in Operin, Scarlet Spear in Opero, and uh, if you don't have the time to farm its components, then your best way to get it is by purchasing it from other players with Platinum. Next we have the Incarnate Strun Prime. First of all, the normal shots of the shotgun can destroy even high level enemies with the right build thanks to the added perk bonuses on its evolution. In fact, the normal form does deal more damage compared to the Incarnate form when dealing with enemies that has high armor values. However, the Incarnate form is great in clearing trash mobs thanks to its explosive nature. The best part is the Incarnate form can be charged fast because of how easy it is to land headshots with the number of pellets that Incarnate Strun Prime can shoot. The weapon has multiple variants and it also has a Wraith version but I prefer the Prime version because it's cheaper than the Wraith version and it has slightly better stats. The Incarnate adapter of this shotgun can be acquired in the Steel Path Duvery circuit in a weekly rotation basis. Also, you can craft your very own best weapon in the game by going to Rude Zood and Fortuna and building your very own Vermisplicer kit gun. I have mine with the components of Vermisplicer Chamber, Macro Thymoid Loader, and Palmar's Grip to make it an all-infested beam weapon. I call it the Henticles, short for, you know, what it is. This is a great weapon to use even in Steel Path levels, especially that you can also use a Pax Charge Arcane that hands you over the ammunition recharge mechanic to solve any problems in ammo economy. However, the weapon needs some time to build up the damage as it relies on Galvanized Mod's bonuses and as well as Primary Arcane's before you can see it melting high-level enemies easily. Nonetheless, it's a great gun 
since you can freely craft it once you have enough Fortuna standings. And then we got the best and meta weapon in Warframe right now called the Incarnate Torrid. The Torrid's blueprint can be researched from the Biolab in the dojo, while its Incarnate form can be acquired in Steel Path Duviri Circuit when it's available in the weekly rotation. This infested weapon shoots gaseous projectiles that lingers and deals toxin damage. The normal shot that is already upgraded to its Incarnate form can deal massive damage that it will only take a couple of shots to take down the Steel Path acolytes in the game and even break Eximus units with Overguard without any issues. The best part is, it doesn't need headshot to charge the Incarnate form as every direct hit will charge it and turn the weapon into an amazing infested beam rifle. Both primary and alternate fire of the gun are great in terms of damage and it doesn't require any headshots to charge the Incarnate. Plus it got decent Riven disposition that makes it a candidate for red crit builds. Truly, Incarnate Torrid is one of the must-have weapons in the game right now. Moving on, we got the Trumna. This is an Orican Arrow weapon created by the Entrati, a fully automatic rifle firing explosive bullets that builds charges on kills to allow use of the alternate fire involving a bouncing high explosive grenade. It can be acquired by reaching rank 3 with the Entrati. Father sells the main blueprint for 5,000 and component blueprints for 2,500. A total of 12,500 is needed for all parts. Admittedly, it's not a super broken weapon, but it's fun to have a mechanic where you can both do a rapid fire and a nuke in one weapon. Plus, it got a special synergy with Zephyr's Tornadoes that makes the gun a one-shot killing machine against Acolytes and Steel Path level enemies. Then, we have the Kuva Zar, which is commonly used with the on-call crew right now. It may be the best in slot for on-call crews, but it doesn't mean that the weapon is not great when used normally with Warframes. The explosive shots of the Kuva Zar are still devastating, and you can also use the cannon mode makes it a single target obliterator. I also included Kuva Agris in this build. I renamed this gun as the Sweet Doom music as you can turn it into a Doom cannon. The Kuva Agris doesn't do that much against Steel Path enemies because of its low critical chance and you would need to kill trash mobs first to stack up the damage from Weapon Arcane. The good thing though is that it has this augment that allows heat damage to linger in the field for a few seconds and this is one of the best weapons when it comes to heat inherit builds. The idea is to use and fire the Napalm shots of Kuva Agris before casting a heat ability to shooting a weapon with heat to exponentially scale the damage of your heat procs. But even without the heat inherit trick, the Kuva Agris is satisfying to use with the Napalm build. And also, I added one of my favorite Kuva weapons in the game, the Kuva Brahma. This is a nuking bow that destroys multiple targets in one shot. Although Kuva Brahma uses significant nerf with the ammunition changes in the game, I still enjoy the devastating power of this nuking bow with the help of mutation mods or simply using the Carrier Prime for its ammo case precept that converts ammunition to your primary ammo. Next we have the Kuva Chakur. This is a unique Kuva flintlock styled rifle. It fires explosive rounds that deal immense damage, even more so on headshots, at the expense of a low fire rate, slow reload speed, and limited ammo reserves. Although the ammo economy of this gun sucks, the high damage per shot makes it satisfying to use. By the way, all these Kuva weapons can be acquired in the Nemesis system. All of these can be obtained by vanquishing a Kuva Leech, who generated with one equip. After the Leech is vanquished, it will be in the player's foundry ready to claim. While the weapon itself is not tradable, a converted Kuva Leech generated with the weapon can be traded to another player. The trade is performed inside a clan dojo's Crimson Branch Room, and the recipient must not have any active Leech. Once traded, the recipient must fight and vanquish the Leech to claim its weapon. And then we have the Corpus counterpart of the Kuva Leech weapons called the Tenet weapons. There are lots of Tenet weapons in the game, but my favorite primary are just Tenet Envoy and Tenet Arcade Plasmor. Tenet RK Plasmor is an upgraded version of the RK Plasmor with improvements to its damage, critical multiplier, status chance, and longer damage fall off range, along with its shots gaining the ability to ricochet off surfaces, but at the expense of slightly slower fire rate, reload speed, and lower reserve ammo. It's a corpus tech that turns shotgun into something that shoots shockwave like projectiles, and it's very satisfying to use while killing enemies. On the other hand, Tenet Envoy is the variant of Kuva Brahma, but it's a briefcase that shoots rocket projectiles that can be guided while aiming. Kuva Brahma may be the best when it comes to nuking, but if you want to have fun, then 10 Envoy is a good option. So that's all about the primary weapons that you must have this year in Warframe. Next time, I'll be talking about all the secondary and melee weapons that you must own this year. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.